and it'll also let you know how to care for your plants as they grow. The items you need for this project are potting soil, worm castings, some time release fertilizer, supplies for a drip line, a pot with drainage holes in the bottom, and of course your plants or your seeds. Links for these and any unpictured items will be in the show notes. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need is some potting mix. I'm using this today. I usually use Kellogg Organic um, Patio Plus, but this one's fine for today. It's about 32 quarts for about $5, so it was a good price. And my recipe for uh, the, the potting mix that we're going to put in here is not just going to be this, but it's also going to be some uh, time-released fertilizer as well as some worm castings. So let's get started. Mm, this smells good. So I'm just kind of going to eyeball but the basic recipe for this is four parts potting soil, one part worm castings, oops, hi Bella, a quarter measure into here. Watch out Bella, Bella wants to be involved too. Maybe about two of these. And I'm just going to mix it all together. It's, it's a little easier to put this all like in a larger container than this and mix it all around. You want to incorporate the plant food all over. So when the roots, when the plant gets big and the roots stretch out, the roots could grab the food. Uh, this kind of fertilizer is a time release. It will feed the plant for up to two months. That doesn't mean you won't ever feed it in between, but it just means it'll be supplying food for two months. Okay, this looks pretty good. The next thing we want to do is we want to set up the drip line. The reason why you want to make sure to do this is because if you are anything like myself, you will probably forget to water this plant in the container. Unless you love watering, this is my suggestion to make sure to set up a drip line and put it on a timer and um, and just let uh, the timer and the drip line do it for you. My plants thrive so much better with a with the drip line and it honestly has made all the difference in the world for me. So basically what you're gonna do is you're going to put your drip line in a spiral shape all the way to the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Let's see how much, I actually have to see how much I need. So I know how much drip line I need, but what, if you didn't notice, 
already that I don't have enough drip line to go outside and hook to anything. So I'm going to finish putting all this in first and then I'll show you what to do then. Okay, so I have enough drip line and I'm gonna use these garden staples to put it in place exactly where I want it. And you don't need to put, put it down too firmly just yet because we're gonna plant in here and we're probably gonna need to move this anyway. But for now, just to kind of get an idea of what we're doing here. Put one of these here. So instead of using this particular drip line, which has emitters every six inches, I want to use some quarter inch tubing to attach to this and to run to the main line. I'm going to use a quarter inch barbed connector. This is a barbed connector. It, on both sides it has the same kind of end and each end goes into uh, your quarter inch drip lines depending upon which kind you're using. You use this to connect one kind of drip line to another or to extend a drip line. To put these two and you just wiggle them right in. It does take a little elbow grease but it's not that hard. Okay so now those are connected and so you can see how this is coming out of the container and so I'm going to cut off a length of it. I'm not going to leave this container here and that's why I'm not going to hook it up to the drip line yet but I'm just going to cut off a length so that I have enough to attach to a main line next to wherever I am going to put this planter. Whether it's potted in plastic or in the biodegradable containers, I suggest to just take it out completely. With the plastic containers, you would just get the plants between your fingers and just squeeze the container and just let it fall out. Okay, and this looks like it has three plants, so we're going to go ahead and up. Now, if you are new to gardening, you may not want to break these up, and the reason for that is because when the roots are disturbed, it may cause these plants to go into transplant shock. So really the, the best way to do this is just to dig the hole and put this whole thing right down in here, and that should really help with the transplant shock. And if you get your soil wet and you follow all my directions, they should be able to avoid a good bit of transplant shock, shock though they do um, run a risk of drooping a little bit for a few days afterward, but hopefully they won't. I'm gonna plant all three of these plants in different places, so I'm gonna go ahead and carefully Try to break these apart. Okay, and so you see how I broke it apart. Like I really didn't disturb the roots all that much. So basically what you're gonna do when you want to plant is you're gonna pull out the middle part of your drip system so that you can have enough room to dig a hole that is deep enough for your plant to go in. And so you don't really want to plant, you know, up here. You don't want to plant that deep. Just plant it 
maybe just a half inch or an inch deeper covering up all the roots. Okay, my cameras went out both at the same time. And so I'm gonna have to just finish like this. I hope you don't mind. So we set this plant in and then we're just gonna bring the soil back around and just press it down and then we'll return this to here. Now because we have emitters every six inches, wherever all these little holes are, we're not going to need an emitter here at the at this this end here. So we're just going to put a goof plug in there. But before we do that, I'm going to hook this up to the main line and I'll run water through this system to make sure there's no dirt in and then I'll put the goof plug in. This is the kind of timer that I'm using in my garden. It's one of the kinds that I'm using. This is for one line only and I got this at Aldi for $14.99, which are, was a really fantastic deal. They usually run about $29.99 or so for different brands at your local garden center. So this was a really great deal. It's real simple to set up and it's really a great addition to the garden. So that's pretty much it. We've got this guy planted and it looks like it's already going to it's already getting a little too hot. I'm going to move it into the shade and then we will be able to keep an eye on it and just make sure it's going to be okay. There is one last thing to do and that would be to water with a water soluble fertilizer. So in the same way that we watered and wet the soil, you would get a water soluble fertilizer and just mix up about a gallon and just go ahead and water all the soil right around it to give it a nice drink. And I've gone over that in other videos before, but if you need instructions on how to do that, just hit me up and I'll uh, give you the link to that video and where it's located or I will do a post a short post on it or a short video on it. This is what my transplant looked like a few hours later with I didn't have it in the sun I actually had that tomato picture shading it from the sun but there was no drooping and this is what it looked like the next day that's this morning and it looks really good. Not a lot of transplant shock, not a lot of drooping or anything. So that's pretty much it. Growing zucchini in containers is really easy. All you're going to do after this, after the drip line's all um, set up and the plant is looking like it's thriving well, you're going to cut back on your watering depending upon what your temperatures are outside. Here it gets to be like 100 degrees and it's been, you know, upper 90s and hundreds this week. And so on weeks like that, I would water a new seedling um, twice a day. And then when it looks good and established and healthy, then I would go ahead and water once a day. And you'll have to experiment with different watering schedules to see what your plants like best. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me comments or questions uh, below the show notes. And visit me over at stonefamilyfarmstead.com. Bye.